Hello, curious people, and here we start with the silly house. Are you a little nervous? A little anxious? Well, you should be. Just because every time we learn something new, that comes with the package. Now you've got your silly house in front of you. And what I'm going to do now, you've got your brushes, you can draw this little silly house on the watercolor paper that I sent you. We talked about that when we talked about supplies. What I want you to do is with no instructions, I'm not going to tell you how to start, stop, or handle the pigment. I want you just to get a hot cup of coffee, Coke, whatever you enjoy, and paint the silly house. Just paint it. Nobody's ever going to see it. We're not going to hang it in a gallery. It's just paint the silly house. Now, remember why I picked the silly house? You're not going to get a good painting out of the silly house. All you're going to do is experience handling the medium. So I'm going to pause now and I'll give you a little time and take your time, have a good time, and enjoy painting the silly house any way you want to do it. Here we are. And I bet y'all have made a glorious mess, or I hope so. And I hope what you found out is that when you go into your silly house and all you have is pigment on your brush, it's thick, it doesn't go anywhere. How much water do I add? I don't know. Rinse your brush, add some water, spreads out. Oop, I didn't need that much pigment or I didn't have enough. You might have found out what happens if I wet the paper. And then you found out the watercolor pigment, being water, is going to spread to the point there is dry paper, and then it's going to stop. It won't go past here. It's going to play all around here in this patch of water. I'm also going to bet you found that if you put another pigment, we're going to use orange in there. Whoa, I didn't mean for it to do that. There are times when you might want it to do that. There's times when you're going to add a color in there and it's going to be ugly. I didn't mean for it to do that, but ooh, it is kind of curious in here, but that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. What you're going to do, and I'm going to show you next, is there's a combination. It's not either or. It's all of it that you need as a technique to do what you want to paint. And here, that's beautiful. So it might behoove you just to get some paper and mess around. Remember what I told you about practice. Practice on the paper you're going to be painting on. It does me no good to practice over here. This is a very inexpensive piece of watercolor people paper. They call it watercolor paper. And what happens they handle very differently. So when I wet this and I put it on, it sticks. Not right, not wrong. You may enjoy a paper that has very little tooth. But for now, when we're beginning, let's practice on the paper that I sent you or that you have. Flip it over. Here's our silly house. Let me do one with you. The first thing I know, I can use round brush. It doesn't matter. I do have my water jug and my palette on my right because I am right-handed. 
if I work with my right hand and I have it on my left, there's a more of a chance I'm going to drip as I go across. Let's do the sky. Everybody loves to do the sky. I'm going to wet it. I'm going to change brushes to the flat brush because I can carry more water and cover more territory. I'm wetting over what we're going to call bushes. And we're going to wet over the tree. Now we are not going to wet the house. Now I'm paying attention to this right here. I have everything above the ground line wet except the house because I don't want the pigment to go into the house. I don't know what color I want the house to be, but I do know I'm going to start with the sky being blue. You've got one blue on your palette. It's going to be up to you to figure out how much paint you want or how little paint you want. I'm going to tilt my paper just slightly and I'm going to paint everything up here blue. Wet my brush. I didn't go back to the pigment. I'm smushing it all around. I am being careful of the edges. See it running and dripping? That's of no concern. Too much blue, just a blob of blue. Just water in my brush. I'm going to spread it out. I'm painting over the bushes. And so far, so good. You're going to hear a lot about so far, so good, because there's steps here. You just don't sit down and go, oh, I'm going to do it all in one step. Now, this is going to be exciting. Your Kleenex or your paper towel. Kleenex works a little better for this because it's more pliable. I'm wadding it up. And I've got little crinkles in here. I'm going to pull up some of the pigment. The paper towel is going to absorb it. That's what they're made for, to wick up liquid. There we go. And I'm going to call it clouds. The darker your blue is, the lighter your clouds will be just because of the contrast. If I push this too hard and sit on it, it's going to smush that pigment into the paper. I'm just letting it absorb. It might work out right the first time and it might work out right the sixth time. But that is a fun way to make some clouds. Oops, I have painted over my silly tree and my silly tree trunk that's supposed to be brown. It's supposed to be green, green. My bushes are supposed to be green and they're all blue. Well, in watercolor, you're gonna go from the lightest to the darkest. And in this case, I want my tree, instead of just being a lollipop tree, I'm going to let it grow. So I'm going to put a little of my green in here, you see, and I'm going to run it right up to the little border. And because this is so wet, as we paint, that's going to move outside just a little of the boundary, and it's going to give the watercolor or the tree a nice soft edge because there's water out here, so the pigment is going to go out there. It's beginning to dry, so it's not just splattering everywhere, and I didn't use a whole lot of it. While I'm at it, I'm going to do the same thing to my bushes. It doesn't matter if we put green on top of blue. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here with the bushes. That one's a little wet. See how it's a little wet? 
That one's better, that one's better, and that one's just right. See it growing out? Nope, you don't. There you go. Too wet. Now, what do we do about that? A couple of things. Let's either clean our brush and mop it out, or let me see if that'll do again. If it runs down here, I can get more green and I'll just make a pretend bush that's going to grow. Now I'm going to stop here and let you practice a little bit on just the sky and the tree. It may sound rather simplistic. Um, I like to compare it to learning to ride a bicycle. I can put your feet on the pedals, your fanny on the seat, your hands on the handlebar, but once I let go, I don't know how to verbalize balance. And I don't know how to verbalize too much water, not enough water, more pigment. Um, in this demo, I, I can't see your work. So now take time. If you mess it up, good for you. If you want to know what happens if, good for you. But be patient with yourself and have a good time with just the sky and the tree. And we're back. How did you do? Do you have a mess? What did you learn? You had to learn something. Every time I put my brush on my paper, I'm learning something. Now, let's move down to the bottom. Your house, the paper up here probably is not dry. So let's go down here and I'm going to wet this shape. And I'm going to do it first. I haven't wet this shape yet. And I'm going to get my green. And I'm going to paint it all in here. I'm going to put a little yellow. Just, I mean, just for something different here. Now remember, it's going to stop where it's dry. I'm going to make this even. So I'm spreading it out. This is still damp. So some of that grass may grow up into the bushes. And that's okay. It's going to continue working as it dries and as it moves around. So now I'll do the same thing over here. Same green, little yellow. Spreading it around. Just like we did the sky, but we're not going to pull up clouds. I'm going to let this set up a minute and I'm going to say to myself, oh, my bush didn't show up. I'm going to touch the paper with my knuckle. Oh, yeah, it's still nice and wet. So I'm going to get a little more green and or blue, doesn't matter. Remember, we're practicing, we're playing, and I'm going to put it back in here. Now that doesn't look like any bush or tree I have ever seen in my life. We're not here to paint a painting. While I get this, I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to stick some of it in the tree. I might even see if I want to put some of it in the bushes and make them a little different from the grass. All righty. So far, so good. I do want to point out that all of our silly houses are going to be very different because we are all using different pressure on the brush, different uh, more or less water on the brush, more or less pigment on the brush. 
and I've done this before. Now I have wet the sidewalk. I have not wet up next to the green. I'm a little premature going in here. So I'm gonna get, oh, what's a good sidewalk color? Let's have fun. Let's do it purple, purple. Now I'm gonna paint up to the edge. Now I'm gonna get in the edge just to show you what's gonna happen. I'm gonna paint up to the edge. See, I've left a little tiny white around there. If it's dry, I don't have to be so careful. I'm gonna blend it around just like I did the sky and the grass. Use either brush you want. There we go. Oh darn, what am I gonna do? My grass just bled all into my sidewalk. Help me, help me, help me. If that's fine. If you're painting a painting for a gallery, it's not fine. But for the silly house, what you just learned was, uh-oh, I lost control here. It's not that it's ugly, it, it, it's not. It's a nice texture, it's just not what I wanted. I've cleaned my brush, I've dried my brush, and I'm gonna come back, clean my brush. I'm working on a towel, so when I clean my brush, I just do it here on the towel. It's a damp brush, clean brush, and I am erasing. You know, they tell you in watercolor you can't erase. Well, I have messed up enough paintings that I have learned, if nothing else, how to erase, how to go to plan B and C. Now, all the same goes with the house. Now, some of you may be trying to get sophisticated and make bricks, and um, that's a bit much for your beginning silly house. I'm going to have an orange house. There we go. And I'm doing this absolutely dry. The house is dry, my brush is dry. I'm gonna change brushes, rinse it, to the round brush, a little pigment on it, because that's gonna be easier for me to get in some of the smaller places. There we go. Orange house. Oh no, oh no, oh no. My orange red into the green. No big whoop. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to get some more green, fill in that little space. And now I'm going to do one of the most important things you're going to learn throughout your watercolor. Leave it alone. You know now, if we're going to put yellow in here and yellow in here and blue on the roof or whatever you do, these sections need to be dry and the house so it doesn't bleed everywhere. These we're working what is called wet and wet, wet the paper, wet the brush, wet the pigment. Dry, I did not wet the paper. I did not bring a lot of water over from the pigment or the water. And it is just sitting where I put it. Oh, tree trunk. We're not mixing colors today. We're going to do that later. But for now, our silly little house. There we have it. Indeed, a silly little house. I think. 
worthy of the refrigerator door. You can brag about it. No one's going to understand except you and me, but we get it. So that completes the silly house. I am going to suggest that you do maybe three silly houses, all different ways, too wet, too dry, and get a real good handle on wet and dry paint. So until I see you later, happy silly house painting to you, and I will see you next time.